morning, everyone. Um, yes, thank you, Inova, for inviting me for presenting this information today. Uh, again, this is about the new muscadine cultivar releases. And one may wonder if we have currently over 500 cultivars of muscadines, why we need to uh, speak um, and uh, why the breeders need to develop new cultivars at all. So I'm going to try to explain why. Um, next slide. Um, yes, muscadines are a crop that is very popular uh, in the southeastern United States. And uh, there are reasons uh, for the popularity. And there are some reasons for the crop not being as popular in other parts of the countries, like uh, in the north or in the west of us. So uh, why they're uh, so popular here? Well, this is a native crop, um, the first muscadine vine uh, that was uh, a named cultivar uh, is uh, located in North Carolina and is still alive. It is over 400 years old and is still producing fruit every year. So that tells us uh, muscadines are very well adapted to the hot and humid climate in the southeast, and uh, they're pretty much very resistant to different um, insect and diseases that um, other types of grapes are experiencing in the southeast. And most of the cultivars of muscadines are resistant to uh, the most uh, deadly disease, the Pierce's disease. They're also very good and in my opinion for right now, probably the only uh, candidate for uh, from fruit crops uh, for organic uh, production. So um, they, uh, this makes them exceptional in, this, um, in these terms. They're also uh, highly productive and uh, very versatile crop. They could be used uh, fresh uh, as a dessert on your table. They could be processed into juices, pies, jams, and jellies, uh, a lot of products uh, based on muscadines. So uh, with that, let me look at uh, some of the characteristics that a juice cultivars need to have to be um, so popular and um, uh, demanded on the marketplace. Um, a very important uh, characteristic is uh, the amount of yield or a productivity of cultivar that is being um, grown for juice production. Also, um, the quality of the juice is not um, uh, the same uh, based on the cultivar. So there are some cultivars that are uh, more feasible for juice production. On the other hand, the size of the berries is not as important um, in this situation because, of course, uh, those berries will be smashed anyhow. But the pigment stability is a very important factor uh, in choosing a purple juice grape uh, for, uh, for juice production. Um, muscadines are well known um, with the, the fact that their pigments are not as stable as the pigments in vinifera and some other types of grapes. What happens over time is the juice is taking on a brownish color and is becoming very unattractive on the marketplace. So noble for now is the only cultivar that is popular because is pigments uh, are more stable and they keep the good uh, quality of the color of the juice for a longer period of time. What are the important traits that we need to look for in a fresh market cultivars? Of course, they need to have those large berries, large berry size that is uh, attracting customer uh, in the marketplace. Another important kind of biological trait, they need to have this dry picking uh, scar or a stem scar. And this is the point where the pedicel is being attached to the berry. Uh, so very often uh, for some cultivars, um, the berries uh, 
when you harvesting the berries, um, the skin around the pedicel is being torn. And this is because mainly uh, those berries are not completely fully ripe at this point of time, but there is also some genetical predisposition to this uh, trait as well. Uh, another important feature for a fresh market berries, they need to be very sweet and very flavorful, very aromatic, and uh, most of the cultivars are having these characteristics, but uh, some of them are better than others. Uniform ripening for concentrated harvests may be important if um, you don't have like you pick operation if the farmer harvests the crop. On the other hand, uh, in situations like you pick, um, we might need the cultivar to have more uh, extended uh, season of ripening. So this can attract more uh, you pickers to come to your, uh, to your vineyard. The appearance of, of the berries is also very important. And again, the larger they are, the better they're liked by the consumer. What is the most important biological characteristic of muscadines? Unlike uh, any other uh, grape species, uh, they uh, require, require pollinizers. They have three uh, types of flowers, uh, male, female, and they have these perfect flowers. And different cultivars are having um, some of those characteristics, mainly Main cult male cultivars are found in the wild and they're not in production. So I'm not presenting them here, but uh, on the picture, you can look at the uh, female cultivar uh, Pam and you can see that the anthers are not well developed on the female uh, cultivar. On the other hand, we have Noble with those perfect flower uh, perfect flowers, what we call them. And this cultivar is uh, self-fertile. Uh, Very often, noble is being used as a pollinizer for many other. Okay. Um, one inconvenience when you are cultivating uh, female cultivars of muscadines, you need to think of planting a pollinizer and very often two pollinizers uh, cultivars are recommended. Uh, so the grower not only needs to arrange for marketing um, the major cultivar that uh, he is growing, but also uh, he needs to find markets for the pollinizer cultivars. Um, so as you can um, uh, figure out uh, the breeding programs, I have um, different goals today, and some of the features are more important than others, but of course, um, the breeders need to think of the use of the cultivar, either it's going to be for juice production or fresh market production, and from there go uh, and um, try to develop cultivars with uh, those um, desirable um, traits. One uh, major biological trait every breeder is looking at, this is the cultivar adaptation for the environment in which it is going to be grown. And for now, um, muscadines are mainly grown in the Southeast, but not all region in the Southeast are equal. Uh, for example, the highly productive Muscadine Supreme uh, is experiencing a lot of cold damage, especially in the spring in the mountains of um, North Georgia. Uh, so um, breeding and developing cultivars that have uh, more cold um, hardiness uh, is one of the goals of the breeding programs. Uh, the other feature, as I just mentioned, is the pollination biology. Uh, it is well known that uh, female cultivars are producing the largest berries of muscadines, uh, but um, this inconvenience of having to plant another pollinizer cultivar comes with that feature. So uh, breeders are looking to develop more self-fertile cultivars that uh, would produce those large berries like the uh, female cultivars do right now. 
season of ripening uh, is related to your harvesting season and your market um, options, so uh, extending or concentrating the, the cultivar that would extend or concentrate the ripening uh, for your operation uh, would be important. Another important characteristics of those muscadines, it is the quality of the fruit uh, in the flesh and also the skin quality. Um, we all know that um, um, our muscadines are having those uh, tough skins and they're hard to chew, especially in combination with those large seeds that are found uh, in those cultivars. So uh, many breeding programs now are looking to develop seedless muscadine cultivars. And it is not an easy task, mainly because of uh, the genetics of muscadines and other types of grapes. Uh, muscadines have different number of chromosomes than most other uh, grapes. So this is um, the process of breeding uh, seedlessness uh, in muscadines is uh, requiring a lot of time and a lot of efforts. Um, the good uh, characteristic, of, especially for a fresh market cultivar, would be the percentage of berries with dry stem scar. As I mentioned, is um, um, turning the, the skin around the pedicel at the time of harvest can um, reduce significantly the storability and the shipability actually of the muscadines. So uh, developing cultivars with dry, with high percentage dry stem scar is really important. And of course, um, um, disease resistance is always on the radar of any breeder. We had some uh, earlier releases. Um, I will present this uh, Majesty that was uh, um, released by Florida AMN in, uh, uh, in, in 2008. Um, I have seen somewhere um, written that if you'd like to impress your visitors, especially if they're not from around, with uh, a nice large size berries of muscadines, you should find uh, a grower who, who has majesty. So um, this cultivar uh, is probably still uh, the producer of the largest berries that we have right now on the market. So the average berry size for majesty is reported to be close to 17 grams. In addition, um, majesty has a firm flesh texture. And uh, one of those other features that I mentioned, the uh, skin of majesty is relatively thin. So this is one of the first to have this uh, wonderful attribute. The color of the berries is uh, reddish to black. And um, this cultivar is being reported to be highly disease resistant. In terms of productivity, uh, I have seen um, Kind of contradictive uh, reports, uh, probably in Florida where it was developed um, is um, uh, very, very highly productive, but some reports from Georgia, for example, um, are not um, that um, um, are not agreeing completely uh, with this, uh, with that report. So uh, this kind of shows the importance of uh, each cultivar being tested for each uh, environment where it's going to be grown. Majesty also requires a pollinizer cultivar for optimal production. Well, the next um, cultivar I wanted to mention is uh, Eudora. It was developed at USDA in Poplarville, Mississippi and released in 2009. Uh, Eudora has medium to high yields, and the berries are reported to be large. I think they might be on, on the borderline, uh, medium to large. They're reported to be like 10 grams. Um, Eudora also has this uh, nice attribute of high percent dry scars um, and um, needs to be planted with another self-fertile uh, cultivar. Um, a good um, quality of Eudora, uh, it may be um, cluster harvested because the berries are 
evenly ripening on the cluster, which is a feature that uh, brings it closer to vinifera or French grapes. And this is the easiness um, uh, at harvest, um, cluster harvesting, of course. With that, I'm going to transition uh, to some of the newest um, University of Georgia Muscadine releases. And um, this um, image represents Hall uh, Muscadine that was released in 2014. And this is uh, a self-fertile and large fruited um, Muscadine cultivar, remember? Uh, usually self-fertile cultivars are producing smaller berries. Female cultivars up until now were producing the largest berries. But um, how is changing that tendency? So this is one of the earliest varieties that farmers can pick. Um, the harvest in Georgia begins in late July. So most of the information that I'm going to share about the new releases is coming from the breeders and uh, those breeding programs where the cultivars were tested for a couple of years. There are not a lot of uh, other uh, research reports from other locations, but we will try to address this with uh, an experiment in, uh, in Alabama, in central Alabama. So whole berries are uh, sweet. Um, they can be picked early. Uh, and whole produces a very attractive color that the consumers in the southeast prefer. You can see uh, there is more yellow in the color. So another release from the University of Georgia is Lane. Uh, it was released in um, uh, 2012. It is another self-fertile um, first early ripening uh, black cultivar. So it kind of combines three important uh, and um, desirable features, uh, self-fertile cultivar with early ripening season that produces black berries. So this is the first uh, early uh, black berry, uh, black cultivar uh, on the market. Um, Berries are large, um, but smaller than uh, Supreme Cultivar produces. Uh, they're reported to be on average uh, 10 grams. The vigor is uh, moderate and the yield is lower, lower than Supreme and Tara, those um, high producers of muscadines, but um, uh, is better than uh, most of the other female cultivars. Uh, Lane has a tendency to split and tear uh, during picking, so it really needs to be picked at the right uh, moment, at the right ripening. The flesh of the cultivar uh, is um, um, kind of firm and that prevents leakage um, during storage and shipping to some extent, so this is a nice feature for Lane. Another new release is POC. Uh, it was released in 2017. It is also self-fertile. You can see that this breeding program kind of focused on um, perfect flowering cultivars. Uh, it is um, ripening during mid-season and produces uh, large fruited berries. So uh, 15 grams on average, this is uh, pretty large. Uh, and uh, larger than um, some of the female cultivars can produce, for example. Uh, it has long pedicels and this makes easy to pick uh, the single berries. Um, they have a high percent of dry stem scar, so pretty good in this direction. Uh, significantly larger grapes than other self-fertile cult cultivars. Um, Polk, of course, does not need a pollinizer to produce large fruit. Ruby Crisp is the latest released from a University of Georgia breeding program. It is also self-fertile, uh, mid-season ripening, and yields are among the highest. The percentage of wet scar split is higher than whole and polk, 
So that's not uh, that good. Uh, but berries are very attractive, as you can see on the image uh, in the middle. Uh, we can look at uh, this ruby crisp with uh, kind of brighter red berries, very, um, very attractive to the eye. Um, have a good flavor, but um, because of the wet uh, stem scar, uh, it's probably uh, recommended more for home gardener use. The firm uh, flesh and tender skin of Ruby Crisp makes it uh, distinctly different from the other tested muscadine cultivars and more similar to the texture of the Vitis vinifera or uh, the French table grape cultivars. Also, uh, the other feature the breeders were developing, berries are non-slip skin uh, and the berry skins have a neutral flavor as well. So this brings it closer to vinifera or the French grapes as well. Sarah Home was um, released by Florida. Uh, it is a, again hybrid between muscadine and the French grapes and uh, numerous other species of grapes. Um, the berries are considered to be on the smaller side, but the flavor is good and the overall quality of this cultivar is good. Uh, it has this crisp flesh texture that the breeders are looking to develop as well. So it, it, the, when you eat it, it uh, reminds you of um, the normal uh, French type of grapes. Southern home is also recommended for more for home gardeners because mainly because of the small berry size. But it also has this wonderful ornamental quality. You can look at this cut leaf pattern and in the fall, everything kind of turns uh, bright red and uh, it's a wonderful wall of uh, bright red leaves of Southern home. Uh, it is reported to be resistant to berry rot diseases like black rot, bitter rot, and ripe rot, of course, resistant to xylella fastidiosa, so it makes it very feasible for home production. With that, I'm going to transition to two cultivars that were developed by private breeding programs recently, and the first of them is Razmatas, uh, Gardens of Life uh, released this cultivar. It is a hybrid between muscadines and uh, French grapes. It is seedless and also self-fertile. Uh, it is reported to be continuously fruiting along the shoot. Uh, so that is a good feature because the number of clusters uh, is reported to be higher for this muscadine. It is also reported to be highly disease resistant. The berries are sweet and tasty with a crisp texture. So going away from this uh, slip skin um, type of muscadines that, um, that we know of right now um, with the newer uh, releases. Uh, Rasmatas is uh, having some dwarfiness in it, so it's reported uh, to be able to be grown uh, successfully on your patio. So if you're looking for a smaller plant, you can, or edible plant, uh, you can consider Rasmatas for sure. The other Gardens Alive release uh, that is seedless also is Oh My. Um, this is reported to be the world's first truly seedless muscadine. It is uh, self-fruitful, disease resistant, cold hardy, and produces uh, high yields over 40 pounds of fruit per mature vine. Uh, you can look at the color, it is really uh, very attractive, uh, bronze color. The skin is reported to be uh, tender. And the fruit is sweet and aromatic, everything that you can expect from a muscadine grape. So as I mentioned, uh, this information uh, is coming from other locations and I outlined the importance for each uh, growing environment to, to have their own information on the performance of those cultivars. And here we are uh, in 2019, we established this um, um, experimental plot at the Chilton Research and Extension Center to evaluate uh, some of the newly released cultivars with improved uh, qualities 
And um, the list of cultivars is uh, here on the right hand side. So we have Polk, Lane, Hall, Eudora, Supreme, and we have Rasmatas and Southern Home as well, even though those are for more for homeowners use. But also we acquired uh, some advanced uh, selections from uh, two breeding programs, uh, one in the Univers University of Georgia and the other from the University of Arkansas, and uh, they're also mentioned. So the number of cultivars and selections here is uh, 13, and all of them uh, are grown in this replicated study. Um, so the older plants were planted in 2019 and uh, another um, set of cultivars in 2021. Um, we're using the typical planting distance for muscadines, 20 by 12. And um, um, last year they produced um, some clusters, uh, but we declustered the vines to provide the root, uh, roots a better chance to establish and um, for the longevity of those cultivars. So right now we're looking to evaluate the first crop in 2022 season. And uh, uh, this picture is taken last Friday uh, from some of the cultivars and we're hoping for uh, a good season so we can evaluate and distribute information to our uh, growers. So with that, I thank you for your attention. And I don't know if there there is time for questions.